Hello everyone and welcome to this Video Sans Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today is a very beautiful Sunday May the 8th. Sin called it Ocho. Wheat May. Or May. Um, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the ThinkPad R61. Now we've not seen that in a while, and um, but here it is. Um, it did have some, did have some writing on it, but um, I've tried to you know wipe a lot of that away with a magic eraser, and unfortunately it's um, obviously I should have known this was going to happen, but it was it's taken some of the texture and finish with it. So well put, well played. Anyway. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is actually restoring this machine to its factory default. Now, the way I'm going to do it is a wee bit unorthodox. Because I don't actually own any Windows Vista restore disks for this. Nor do I own any XP restore disks for this. In fact, what I'm going to be using is a set of disks that I actually bought from a T420, just in case I ever wanted to go back to Windows 7. So there you go. However, I've done this before, and this does actually work with this machine. Naturally enough, though, the only thing that doesn't work is that, um, of course, when you install Windows, it's not pre-activated. Wouldn't expect it to be, wouldn't want it to be, because that would be kind of like, yeah, I'm just kind of... Yeah, totally taking Lenovo for a ride. But the rest of this machine actually works beautifully after having been restored with these recovery disks. Now, I know what you, some of you are thinking. You're thinking, Jay, the contrast is absolute pure bollocks. And you're right, it is. It's very sunny behind me. Well, in front of me, behind the laptop. You're probably also thinking that, um, you know, Lenovo software, Lenovo pre-installed software, Windows 7, am I not worried about Superfish or one fish, two flesh, fish blow, fish Homer ate a blow fish and got poisoned, or thought he did, I don't, I don't know, um, I forgot what it was called, um, and the answer to that is no, not a bit, and the reason for that is that, um, the Superfish spyware thing, which is actually quite a big problem, was only installed on some of Lenovo's, um, well, it was only installed on Lenovo's consumer machines. And even so, it was actually installed on some of their much later consumer machines. And, you know, even if it was a problem, it can be easily removed. Anyway, without further ado, I think what I'm going to do is we'll start up this computer. Now, I have done this before, you know, so um, I, I, you know, I did a dry run last night, you know, just to, you know, test, see if it worked. And um, because at, the, at first I actually thought that um, this was just, you know, a standard Windows 7 DVD with Lenovo's branding on it. But no, turns out it's a Lenovo Rescue and Recovery image, and that's um, the first time I've ever, like really kind of used one of those. I mean, I'm pretty sure my original R61 I had the recovery partition intact, but because um, that was full of university software, it didn't bother with it. And when I did come to format the machine, I put Windows 7 on it, and the university was like, go ahead, and if you have any problems, just bring it back and we'll format it, we'll put the original image back. Which I thought was very, really quite decent of them. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, just um, I'm going to boot from the CD, which for some reason is the top option. Perhaps Lenovo know that we're a way to boot from a CD. So what this does is this, uh, is this actually opens up WinPE. And what that is, it's kind of like a, 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 a size down Windows, if you will. Um, doesn't load into the shell or anything like that. It just literally, it's it's 
all it is is the Windows runtime environment. Think XL2.11 on MS-DOS. You know, if you didn't have Windows installed, it would install enough of Windows to be able to actually start and run Microsoft Excel. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, what this is going to do is it's going to load up Windows PE. I forget what that stands for. Physical Education. You can only assume. Now I'm getting on. Um, and it's actually going to load up the Lenovo Rescue and Recovery software. Um, and it's a little known fact, actually, that um, on the ThinkPads um, that were destined, you know, for to be sold in Scotland, they actually did add about three more R's to Rescue and another three to Recovery. And uh, this wasn't just known as the IBM ThinkPad, uh, Lenovo ThinkPad R61. It was l known as the Lenovo ThinkPad R61. Nah, I'm kidding. On. <laughs> but for all my American friends who seem to take great delight in trying to say hard drive like I do, and with like way too many R's, like hard drive. <laughs> but yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of let this load because there's really nothing else I can do. You know. I mean, I could, like, unplug it and throw it across the room like I didn't like the direction, but... No, nah, I really like this machine. So I'll just wait here. Oh no! Who remembers this? The Windows Vista-esque loading screen. I mean, what were Microsoft doing? Oh, you won't need the logo. Windows Vista is so fast, right, that it'll load so quickly that there'd be no need for a splash screen. I hope that's not what they were thinking, because they were very, very, very badly mistaken. So now we're in Lenovo Rescue and Recovery 4 from Lenovo Think Vantage Technologies. Really makes you think. Um, so this is literally a restore environment. All it'll do is it'll um, install a base image of Windows and then like what seems to be every other modern uh, recovery routine. What it will then do is set about installing all the programs on top of it. So, um, you know, this first part is only the very, very beginning. So, yep, I'm going to accept the license agreement. All the software you've got is going to be removed. Um, so, basically, what this is doing is it's preparing the hard disk. So, everything that's on the disk is now going to go bye bye. <laughs> now, a wee bit about this machine. Um, I um, I understand that I've not been too forthcoming in uh, recent videos with specifications of computers that I've been showing, and I apologise for that. And I'm aware that I'm probably going to be repeating myself. But for those of you who are just kind of, you know, joining this channel and have not seen previous videos of this ThinkPad, of which there are not many, um, I suppose I best share with you the actual specifications of this machine. Well. This starts off, it's got a Core 2 Duo, clocked at 2 GHz, which is quite nice. Um, that is backed up by 4 GB of DDR2 memory. And I think I had a 160 GB hard drive in that originally. But I weaked out that and installed in its place a 250 GB Western Digital Drive. And um, it's using a an Intel 965 chipset with the graphics, 965. Actually quite good for what they were. Um, and by they're good for what they were, I mean it was very good for playing The Sims 2. <laughs> with some of the settings turned up a wee bit. And um, <clears throat> it has a DVD-ROM drive, 15.4 inch WXGA TFT screen. Um, what, as opposed to a DSTN model? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the ThinkPad R61 with a DSTN display. That's just brilliant, that is. Um, <laughs> now I'm kidding on then. I don't believe that Lenovo ever made a DSTN version of this machine. If they did, it would have been quite strange. And um, got wireless on it. Uh, don't believe it has. It doesn't have Bluetooth. And but unlike my R61i, this machine has a trackpad. So you've got the track point, you know, for the Luke Millers of Luke Millers of this world. You've got this. Uh, for everyone else, you've got this. And for complete wussies like me, you've got one of these. <laughs> nah. I can use a trackpad and a track point just fine if I need to, but sometimes it's nice to just use a good old-fashioned moose. Now this is going to take quite a long time, so not only will I get a cup of tea, I will drink it and probably go off and do something else and completely forget about this. So uh, jump cut to five o'clock in the morning, everyone! <laughs> Getting on. Well, that seemed to go a wee bit quicker than I remember, but now it's saying please insert the applications and drivers, uh, recovery disk 1 into drive F, is that? Well, whichever, it's, it's, it's a CD-ROM drive. I've just had a look and the date on the back of these discs is um, 28 10 2009. So this would have probably been something that, you know, would have more likely been installed on a T400 or an R400 or, you know, equivalent, you know, T500, R500. So I'll let this disc spin up. Oops. Okay, maybe uh, maybe I'll just kind of press the yes button now and it'll it'll do it. Oh well. <laughs> oh, here we go. So now this is a way to actually install all the applications and what have you. It will then ask me for a supplemental recovery disc, and for some reason. I didn't get that, so, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's not necessarily needed, because I can just click um, the no button, and, um, you know, it'll cancel out of it, and, and then it'll just go and start loading, you know, start loading Windows up and uh, preparing it, which is quite good. <laughs> So, as with um, as with the last disc, I will just leave this to its devices and come back once it's done. Okay, maybe this part didn't take as long as I remember it doing, but I mean the entire restore process itself, you know, because it goes through all kinds of different things, and then at the end of it, what it does is creates a recovery partition. It capture it it puts an image onto the machine. Captures it, yeah, puts an image onto the machine, sets everything up, captures it, makes it into a recovery partition, and then it'll actually uh, boot you into Windows 7 setup. So, I mean, that is, that is a thing. <laughs> that is a thing to happen. <laughs> but I'm glad it does that. I'm glad it recreates a recovery partition. Um, the red Asus... The red Acer machine I have doesn't. And I probably will try Windows XP on it at some point, but I, I'm not sure. It's, it's definitely not going to be a permanent thing. Because, I mean, that is my Linux machine at the moment. So there, there you have it. So this has actually finished really quite quickly, and I've just realised that I'm only filming the bottom part of the screen. Well done, Jay. Um... So, so while I spend all this time adjusting the camera, something that I probably should have done before I started, and uh, there we go. 
there we go. Um, so because I don't have that desk and any of the other desks will just basically tell me that it's not the correct one, what I'm going to do just tell it nope. And then what's going to happen now? Uh, the recovery process has, be, has been finished. Please remove all recovery media. Do you want to restart the system now? Sorry about that. You probably see me. Very small writing. It's not like Windows 10 where you can magnify on just about kind of any display configuration. I mean, it might not work that well, but it'll certainly give it its damn best shot. CGA? No problem. No, I'm kidding on, but yeah. <laughs> So, the system is self-bootable now, but um, as you can see, it is going into Windows Setup. And what it will do there is, um, oh, there we go, got the uh, lovely Windows Vista startup screen again. Um, Windows 7 computers do do that as well, you know, if, 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 if it's been set to that, which I think when P kind of is. But um, basically what's going to happen now is um, lots of commandy prompty style windows are going to appear and um, lots and lots of text will scroll and there'll be even more command, command prompt windows at the bottom. You can't see that but there you go. And they all are. But um, <clears throat> yeah that's just kind of the first part of the um that's the first part of the preparation steps but as you can see you know the the uh the image manager whatever it is i, I can't actually see um de uh, deployment image set uh deployment image servicing and management tool you know it's it's just kind of putting stuff together and what have you. So, you know, that, that'll work for a wee bit. And then we will actually end up in Windows itself, um, where it will actually, it'll actually run a script called dowork.cmd, which is quite funny. Ah, I think we're actually a way to do that just now. That's quite convenient because I can film this bit now rather than filming it later. And now we have the actual Windows 7 startup screen. Odd sounds coming from the server. Don't like that. <clears throat> so what's going to happen here is, you know, you're going to kind of see something like this. Windows is starting services. Windows is installing devices. Windows is getting re your PC ready for first use. Windows has had enough. Windows is away out on the lash. You know, that, that sort of thing. And then it will actually start do doing stuff. Um... So yeah, this, this installing devices bit doesn't actually take too long at all. As you can see, it's, it's, it's going right the way through there. It doesn't, you know, stop to freeze or anything like that. I mean, yeah, it might stop, might linger on a certain percentage, but phew, away it goes again. Yep, and then we've got some dodgy video output from the Intel video drivers. You know, because... It's fun. <laughs> and there we go. Boom. Setup is applying system settings. 
I've always liked these wacky Windows 7 animations. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Command prompt. Didn't actually realise that was in Windows proper. That's, uh, that is quite interesting. And then it'll restart again. Yep. There we go. So if you like watching your computer restart a lot, then um, aside from getting it into a boot loop, this is the way to do it. P.S. The boot loop idea is not a very bright one. Now there we go. Setup is preparing your computer for first use. Now you might think that at this point it would actually go on and, you know, give you the out-of-the-box experience, but uh, you would be very, very, very badly mistaken. <clears throat> I mean, I think it will do that. Well, it'll do that actually quite a few times. You'll, you'll see this screen. Oh, setup will continue after restarting your computer. Quite a lot to do. And you think about... You, know, you think about all the drivers that I actually go and install on one of these things and, you know, the order in which I've got to do it. You know, and it's, it's almost kind of a ritualistic OCD style kind of ceremonial thing installing drivers to a ThinkPad. You know, and in a way that everything might actually blooming well work. So, I mean, with that in mind, this restore process, you know, having to restart all the number of times that it does, you know, it makes perfect sense. And that's why on a ThinkPad, <laughs> using a factory restore image is probably not the worst idea in the world. Okay, so now we're actually in Windows. Um, as you can see, it's just saying welcome there. Very nice. Um, no out-of-the-box experience, as you can see. And it's just kind of the standard Windows 7 background. No OEM branding at all whatsoever. And um, that is because it's not anywhere near ready to actually start loading any of that. So here we are. We're on the... Um... So we've finished doing... A couple of the things. Now we're on to um, do work.cmd, and after that's done, which will take quite a long time, it will do um, finish.cmd. And if you think that um, this dialog box looks familiar, yeah, that's right. It's um, if you have ever installed Internet Explorer 4 and upwards and Windows 95 or NT4, or Windows 2000, um, then this is a dialog box that you get, um, which shows you what Internet Explorer 7, uh, what Internet Explorer setup is currently doing on your computer. So that's quite something. Anyway, <clears throat> I am going to leave this to do what it's got to do now, because really, this, this is just going to, do uh, go into this screen, restart, go back into this screen, restart, go back into this screen, restart. Yep, see what I mean. So, I'll come back, I'll, I'll try and catch it uh, once it gets to the last part of um, the recovery process. Okay, so this is now the last part of setup. As you can see, what is happening is uh, we're going back into WinPE with the dodgy Windows Vista startup screen. So what I think is going to happen now is um, like I said, now that Windows is completely set up, you know, at least a factory install of it, um, what is happening now is that um, the software, the rescue and recovery software is 
going to make a partition, a recovery partition. Basically going to save the image, do that. And then in future, you know, if I did need to recover the system, I could do so using that. Quite a neat wee idea. I like it. So what's happening is it's just scanning files and directories and then, you know, it's just going to start in imaging stuff. So I will leave this to its own devices. Once it is done, it will actually boot straight back into Windows and then I will actually... Um, I will actually have the um, out of the box experience. We'll go through that, and uh, then we'll explore the image and you know see what uh, see what's what. So I'll be back then, and we're back. And um, I would say that this restore is probably just taken just under an hour and a half to complete from you know switching the machine on and booting from the first CD first DVD to um, actually get into this screen, I would say it's taken just under an hour and a half. So, um, next thing I need to do is um, actually just go ahead and set it up now. And now this ThinkPad, you know, it's got exactly the same OEM information as the, um, as the Lenovo Think Centers do at Penumbra. Um, and I'm just going to type in my password, and now it's going going to ask me to, um, you know, uh, agree to the terms and conditions. And um, I don't know where it got that time from, but that's that's not right. That's not right by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Um, and also I'm having great trouble here seeing the screen. Uh, there we go. So the time is currently 19.15. So there we go. Yep, and it's picked up the wireless network. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click next. Because I'm actually connected by Ethernet. And so I'm going to say that this is my home network. And what's going to happen is um, this is going to set up the network and then just kind of go away and build me a profile. Which is awful nice of it. <clears throat> Setup will continue after restarting your computer. Well, it always does. Hey. So here we go, starting Windows. Nice. Still continuing to start Windows. Setup is preparing your computer for first use. You've said that so many times that I just don't even believe you anymore. And this computer will, will have been set up so many times for first use that it will literally upgrade me to Windows to... Oh, crap, it'll do that anyway. Um, <laughs> although that's coming to an end in the next couple of months because uh, Windows 10 is no longer going to be free. It's going to be really quite odd. Like, you know, and after, after July, you know, having to pay... For Windows 10, having to pay to install Windows 10 on your PC like in a, any other version of Windows, because you know it's just been you know free for so long now, and it's um, you know even you know the, even even to the point where it's actually forcing you to install it. It's like, you must go and install Windows 10 now. 
Install Windows 10. Anybody? Your upgrade is ready. Anyone? Oh, it seems that nobody wants to upgrade. Well, you can fit. I'm done. I'm just gonna install it anyway. So now it's just preparing the desktop. If it's spending that long preparing my desktop, I mean, what's it doing? Sending away to Microsoft to have someone actually manually recode the Windows shell? Oh, now we're in something. Um, you know, so I could either, you know, I could have Peter Norton completely re-engineered for speed. It safeguards your computer against viruses. Spyware protecting uh, phishing and hackers without slowing you down. Select continue to protect your PC now. And uh, don't protect. Are you sure you don't want to protect? Yeah, okay. And then we could set up online backup. Now when you need it most, want more protection. An external hard drive, a ThinkPad external hard drive. Look at this LML3. Do you not want that? Do you not want that in your Christmas stocking? I can you want that in your Christmas stocking. <laughs> Getting on. Um, ooh, a ThinkPad hard drive. Okay, so I'm just going to skip the registration because... Yep, and now it's telling me that if I press the Think Vantage button, many, many wonderful things will happen. Now I'm going to continue closing setup. And what's going to happen now? Well, it's using the Windows Classic theme. Um... I meant, I meant the actual Windows Classic colour scheme within the Windows Classic theme. Sorry, not the... Yeah, I know it uses Windows Classic theme before it sets up Arrow. And now it's um, asking me to set up um, this location. So, I will. I remember doing this uh, with my old R61A when it had Windows XP. I remember... Um, I actually remember moving during... Um, my second year at university and um, you know first thing I did was um, put the ThinkPad on the desk plugged it into the Ethernet cable uh, plugged it into the um, Ethernet and um, it was like oh would you like to set up your new location I'm like aye one then anyway so here we are Windows 7 not activated yet I'm going to have to I'm going to have to give it a product key and see. There you go. Activate your sale. And, um, yep, I don't want to allow the theme to change the mouse pointer. Yeah, no, none of that. Nonsense. Um, so what's it got with it? Well, we have Synaptics install Norton Internet Security. Um, Lenovo ThinkVantage Tools, Adobe Reader 9. Desktop Gadget Gallery, Internet Explorer 64-bit and Internet Explorer. Um, try Skype voice and video calling. Um, this machine does have a microphone, unlike my um, old R61, but does not, in fact, have a webcam. And do you know what? I'm actually going to zoom this in so I don't have to keep like bobbing in front of the camera. Well... <laughs> That's a theory anyway. Right, let's try that again, will we? Oh! Eventually. Um. Excellent, I can actually see now. Um. 
There's also um, Windows Anytime Upgrade, which comes with any version of uh, Windows 7. Oh, there's Windows Update. Oh! That, that wasn't a bright idea now, was it? Putting a blooming magnifier on. That was, uh, whoopsie. Oh dear. <laughs> um, so that's... What's happened there is the new video... <laughs> New video drivers have been installed. Windows Update doesn't half work fast. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shut this down. Again. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll restart this system again. I must admit it's been an absolutely beautiful day. It started off quite brocket this morning but... Uh, it's it's turned into an absolutely beautiful kind of spring day. I like that. It's, we need this kind of weather sometimes. Just to keep the vitamin D levels up and what have you. Oh, <laughs> it's done more than that. It seems to have installed a battery of updates. Like I said, doesn't seem to mess around, doesn't Windows 7 where Windows update's concerned. Not like Windows 10. That Windows update, it's almost as if, you know, you're forever telling it, I want to update, I want to update. And it's like, no, I don't want to update, I really don't. And then you're, and, and then eventually, you know, it just kind of does it itself. And then, you know, you're halfway through a Word document, and before you know where you are, your computer's shutting down in front of you. You're like, what's going on here? Oh, um, yeah, apparently I had to change a setting somewhere deep in the bowels of the Windows Update setting to actually have Windows not do that. Well played, Microsoft. Business productivity operating system, really. I mean, yeah, I do love Windows 10, but... James, I mean, <laughs> still need a wee bit of sorting out. But um, I have every confidence that um, the wee niggles that are still remaining will be sorted out. Now hopefully it shouldn't take anywhere near as long to get to the desktop this time. Would you look at that? So here we are, back at the desktop. We've got the um, Lenovo Think Vantage toolboxy thing and then we've got the battery bar. And now I'm going to go back to all the programs. Um, games have actually been installed. I'm quite surprised at that because normally I thought I'd set this up. Oh, I probably didn't. I selected cancel. Oh well. <sighs> okay, that's good. That's sorted. Um, so yeah, all the games have actually been installed. Um, and then there's more games from Microsoft, I don't think. But, you know, you know what it's like with you know what it's like on this channel. I've got to do this. Yay, Purple Place! Indeed, Purple Place. And, um... Yeah, we could, um... Not done this for a while. This this is a game that lends itself really quite well to Windows 8 and 10's touchscreen interface, you know, for things like tablets. And, um... It's just not there. There we go. So I, I, I made an cake. <clears throat> so let's have a look. Enter video when DVD. Good. Hopefully that actually works on this system. There we go. So I seem to remember something quite similar being installed on my R61. Oh look, Windows has installed some updates. What do you want, a biscuit? Um. We've got WinDVD, Lenovo Services, online data backup, nice. Um, 
we've got Microsoft's maintenance folder, backup and restore, create a system repair desk help and support, Windows remote assistance, um, Microsoft Research Auto Collage uh, Touch 2009, whatever that's supposed to be, Roxio Creator Business Edition, my DVD, and um, Roxio Creator Business Edition, nice. And, well, that's about it. But, um, you know, for onboard software, I would say that that's actually, um, that's actually pretty good going for onboard software. You know? I mean, you really, you really don't get it. You really wouldn't get this with, um, you know, a consumer-grade machine at the time. Um, you'd have been given something like NTICD or DVD Maker, something horrifically hideous like that. So, you know, and, and business class machines generally don't tend to come with the uh, software preloaded on them. So, um, I mean, this literally has everything it needs to work and everything it needs for you to be able to use every feature of this machine. So let's see if the Think Vantage button works. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. I remember the Think Vantage toolbox, and um, I kind of do lament the the demise of it. You know, I think um, I think it was a very good bit of software, and it would just kind of load like that. You know, you'd get the wee menu. So you know, I'm not too happy that it's away. Um, explore the value built into any Lenovo PC or every. Security made easy. And look, we've got um, the machine, see, uh, the, the actual machine information. So we've got the product, uh, serial, BIOS, and the warranty, which um, it has none because it's very, very old. But um, that there you have it. Um, last thing I want to show you, the uh, Windows 7 um, hard ThinkPad, the Think Experience, whatever it is, um, that never seems to work when fired up from the taskbar. Oh, yeah, no, it is. Just had to be patient. And, um, you know, here you have all kinds of um, things that you can actually do with your ThinkPad. You can get to this from uh, devices and drivers as well, or devices and printers, rather. Um... So you've got um, Lenovo Think Vantage tools, updates and drivers, support and download, hardware settings, uh, system settings, Lenovo's accessories and upgrades, or browse disks and drives. So that's good. Anyway, this machine spent a good long while writing an image, a restore image, to the hard drive. So let's go and have a look at the restore partition. Now I'm not going to set you through a restore process again, 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 again. Um, but we will just kind of have a look at, you know, some of the software. Uh, we will just kind of have a look at the interface. There we go. We're actually heading into the rescue and recovery environment. Now I'm guessing if I restored it from here, it would actually be a lot quicker than restoring it from the DVDs, because half the battle's already been done. So here we go. And once again, Lenovo Think Vantage Technologies Rescue and Recovery 4. Starting the res um, Rescue and Recovery Workplace. Workplace. You just love that business style language. That must have been a handover from IBM. By using the software, you agree to the terms of the license agreement. So we can either um, rescue files. That's nice. It must have done a wee backup. Or you could do a full restore. This option restores your operating system, applications and files from a previous backup. Files 
that are new and that have changed since the selected backup was created will be lost. And then you've got a quick restore. This, this option restores only an operating system and applications from the latest backup, uh, leaving your files where they are, which seems to be greyed out. So, um, restoring the system will overwrite your blah blah blah. So I wonder what it would actually give me. Right, so I could put more backups on here, but for the meantime, all it has is the factory recovery. So, there you have it. So I've uh, never actually used this system before. But, um, you know, I probably will experiment with it at some point. But, for now, I think that um, this concludes this video. I hope you've all enjoyed watching it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe to my channel um, and to like videos on Frontier on Facebook. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter. The URLs will, of course, follow. But for the meantime, thank you for watching this video and please do feel free to join me for my next one. Goodbye. bye